Hello again everyone and welcome to my second video. This video is going to be about the knock daemon which can be run on a Linksys router using the DDWRTF firmware. This is a simple block diagram to illustrate my home network. This is, this is uh, my home computer connected to my uh, Linksys router which is running the DDWRTF firmware which is a small Linux designed to run on the Linksys routers. I'm just drawing the connection between my uh, router to the internet and then I'm going to draw my uh, office computer this is my computer and I'm going to draw my office computer from, from which I want to connect through the internet to my home computer now I want to connect and I have one obvious choice to do that and that is to use uh, port forwarding to poke holes in my uh, in my firewall and grant access to actually everyone from the internet into my uh, internal network using the the specified port the the port forwarded uh, port now obviously that is going to allow me to connect from my workplace to to my home uh, network no no sweat but this is also going to leave my home network uh, open for malicious attackers that is, in addition to myself, everyone else on the internet can go through in that, that port and attack my uh, internal network. Furthermore, even if uh, the malicious attacker doesn't actually gain access through this uh, port into my, uh, my network, it still leaves my, uh, my internal machines exposed for denial of service attack. Not a good idea anyhow, so I'm not going to use it. Now by implementing the knock daemon what we're gonna do is we're gonna, gonna specify for the, the daemon the, the quote unquote service or program on the router that only if it senses communication coming from, uh, from the outside world and that communication has a certain sequence then it's gonna issue a command. Now I'm going to show this dem demonstration using the, the 3389 uh, port which is the remote desktop protocol port and I'm going to, to draw random ports here on the external part of the firewall and now by using this green line to represent communication from the outside world I'm going to the first port then to the second port then going back to the first port and lastly going to the last and final port which is going to activate a command sequence that we've configured beforehand to actually uh, open up the port allowing the communication from the outside world into the internal network for a certain amount of time that we've also configured beforehand. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it into our router. Now I usually put it into my router using SSH but this time I'm I'm lazy. I've started again from scratch and I don't have the power to, to set up the the, the PuDi like I should. So putting in the username and password for the router. I'm in. Now you'll have to excuse me but but I don't re memorize the the commands and I do write them down to myself so I know what I'm doing because I don't remember in in like 6 months or something like that when when I actually decide to to upgrade my my firmware uh, I'm not going to remember so <laughs> it's written down and what I found out is if you're using V24 if, if you've used uh, V23 uh, SP2 and even SP3 you didn't have this problem I don't know why, why it started all of a sudden but I don't know why you need to add the, the directory this JFFS it's, it's actually the, the directory the, that's gonna hold the program and you need to add this directory in order for, for the rest of the commands to work. I don't know why, but it does. So, let's do this. So, the first command we're gonna do is, uh, is update, actually. We're gonna update our, um, our list of programs that we can use so the, the router actually knows which, which programs uh, he can it, it can install. You see, it's going over to the to the white Russian site and uh, get, getting all the the lists. And what I like to do right now is actually show the lists. 
just so, so you get a, a grasp of what we're actually talking about here, the, this list is, is infinite, in my opinion. You get everything you need here. You get the, the Squid server, which is a proxy server. You have the VPNs. You have PHP servers, SSL VPNs, you name it.